Chapter the Chapter Four, Captain Cook, who who Captain Cook at Miss Popper, who had come in so quietly that none of them had heard her. Why the penguin? Said Mr. Popper. I was just saying. He went on as Miss Popper sat down suddenly on the floor to recover from her surprise. That we named him after Captain Cook. He was the famous English admiral who lived about the time of the American Revolution. He sailed over no one had ever been before. He didn't actually get to the South Pole, of course, but he made a lot of important scientific discoveries for the Antarctic regions. He was a brave man. And a car leader, so I think that the cook would be a very suitable name for your own party. Yes. Well, I never said, Mister Popper. Work said, Captain Cook, suddenly getting lively again, with a flap of his flippers, he jumped from the tub to the washstand, and stood there for a minute surveying the floor. Then he jumped down, walked over to Miss Popper, and began to poke her ankle. "Stop it, Papa!" screamed Miss Popper, retreating into the hallway with Captain Cook after her, and Miss Popper and the children following. In the living room, she paused. So did Captain Cook, for he was delighted with the room. Now a penguin may look very strange in a living room, but a living room looks very strange to a penguin. Even Miss Popper had to smile as they watched Captain Cook with a night of curiosity in his excited circular eyes and his black tail coat dragging pompously behind his little pinkish fish. Scooted from the one up holster chair to another, picking a net to see what it was made of. Then he turned suddenly and marched out of the kitchen. Maybe he's hungry," said Jenny. Captain Cook immediately marched up to the refrigerator. Cook, he inquired, turning to snatch his hands wisely. At Miss Popper, and looking at her, bleeding with Lee with his eye, right eye, he certainly is killed," she said. "I guess I'll have to forgive him for biting my ankle. He probably only did it out of curiosity. Anyway, he's a nice, clean-looking bird." Oh, repeated the penguin, nibbling at the metal handle of the freezer dresser. A door with his abstract big with a paper opened the door for him, and Captain Cook stood very high and leaned his black black head back so that he could see inside. Now that Mr. Popper's work was over for the winter, the the ice box was not quite so full as usual, but the penguin did not know that. What do you suppose? He lies to it," asked Mister Popper. "Nessie," said Mister Popper, and he swung over, pushed, and sat in on the kitchen table. "Now then, Captain Cook, take a look." The penguin jumped up on to a chair and from there onto the edge of the table, stopping his flippers again to recover his pedals. Then he walked solemnly around the table and between the dishes of food, inspecting everything with the greatest interest, though he touched nothing. Finally, he stood still, very erect, raised his big two points at the ceiling, and made a loud, almost purring sound. Oh, oh! He tried to. That's the penguin's way of saying how pleased it is," said Mister Proper, who had read about it.
it in his Antarctic books. Apparently, however, what Captain Cook wanted to show was that he was pleased with their kindness rather than with their food. For now, to their surprise, he jumped down and walked into the dining room. I know, said Mr. Popper, we ought to have some seafood for him, canned shrimps or something. Or maybe he isn't hungry yet. I read that penguins can go for a month without food. Mama, Papa, Cook Bill, come see what Captain Cook was done. Captain Cook has done it all right. He had discovered the bowl of goldfish on the dining room window sill. By the time Miss Barbara went over to leave him away, he had already swallowed the last of the goldfish. Back, back, penguin, reproved Miss Popper, glaring down at Captain Cook. Captain Cook squatted guiltily on the carpet and tried to make himself look small. He, know, he knows he's done wrong, that Mr. Popper isn't he smart. Maybe we can train him, said Miss Popper. Well, naughty captain, she said to the penguin in the now voice. Back to eat the goldfish, and she pranked him on his raw black head. Before she could do that again, Captain Cook hastily rushed out to the kitchen. Then the purpose found him trying to hide it. The stair opened with the traitor. He was squatting under the ice cook coils under which he would barely squeeze. Sitting down, his round white circle eyes looked out at them mysteriously from the dimness of the inside of the box. I think that's about the dry temperature for him at that said Mr. Popper. We could let him sleep there at night. But where will I put the food? asked Miss Popper. Oh, I guess we can get another ice box for the food, said Mr. Popper. Look, said early, he's gone to sleep. Mr. Popper turned a cold control switch to his coldest so that Captain Cook could sleep more comfortably. comfortably. Then he left the drawer altar so that the penguin could have plenty of fresh air to breathe. Tomorrow, I will have the ice box service department send a man out to borrow some holes in the door for air, he said, and then he can put a handle on the inside of the door so that Captain Cook can go in and out of his refrigerator as he pleases. Well, tell me, I never thought we could have a penguin for a pet, said Miss Popper. Still, he behaves pretty well on the whole. And he is so nice and clean that perhaps he will be a good example to you and the children. And now, I declare, we must get busy. We haven't done anything but watch that bird. Papa, will you just tell me to set the beans on the table, please? Just a minute, answered Mr. Papa. I just happened to think that Captain Cook when I fell dry on the floor of that icebox. Penguins make their nests of pepperos and stones, so I will just take some ice scoops out of the tray and put them under him. That way he will be more comfortable. 